in this video we have a question we want to look at. Now for each question we're going to solve, we'll find out first if the probability there is binomial probability or Poisson's probability, so that we'll know the formula to apply. The question reads, in a given penalty kick for which the player strikes five times, the probability that he scored is 40%. Determine the probability that he score exactly two, exactly three, at least three, more than three, at most two, less than two. So we have six questions here. Is that okay? Now, first of all, let's look at this and then identify whether this question is binomial probability or Poisson's probability. Is that okay? And to identify that, we need to check back the conditions that we established already for each of these probabilities. Remember, for binomial probability, the probability of success P is expected to be greater than 10%. That should be zero, greater than 0 0.1. Is that okay? Now, if you look at the question here, the probability that the player scored is 40%. Now, let me quickly say this. The term success in probability simply means that we are sure that event took place or is going to take place. When you hear success in probability, it truly really doesn't mean that the thing is good. Good enough for this question, the, the, the probability of success is that the person scored 40%. Is that okay? The question could have been that the probability that the player did not score is... Is that okay? Now they give us a value. That probability that he did not score, it means we know that he didn't score and that would now become the success. Take another example, if maybe in a production line, it is known that in all the production, batch production, that maybe 60% of the item there are going to be bad. Just imagine, producing something out of 100%, 60% will be bad. That is not a good news to hear, is that not so? But the fact that we know that that event is going to take place means that that 60% is a success. Have I communicated? So please, don't think that the term success as using probability means that the thing must be good. Alright? Okay, now, back to the question. The probability that the player scored a penalty kick is 40. So we know that that is the event, the probability of the event that's going to happen. So the success P is equal to 40%. And of course, 40% is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.4. You see clearly that the probability of success is greater than what? 0.1 is greater than 10%. So we can start suspecting what? Binomial probability. Then let us see the number of trials n. Okay, he is to take the penalty kick five times. Five is small. Is that okay? It's a small number of trial. Therefore, it satisfies what? Binomial probability distribution. So we're going to solve this using what? Binomial distribution. So use binomial binomial probability probability is that okay the reason i've been given so if you're using binomial probability we know the formula it means we have to determine the probability of failure okay q is equal to 1 minus p so that would be 1 minus 0 0.4 and that would be 0 0.6 is that okay now we've gotten the probability of success P and the probability of failure Q. It's now time to bring out the formula for binomial probability. So recall, the probability that a discrete random variable assumes the value X is given according to binomial probability as N combination X times probability of success raised to the power X times probability of failure raised to the power N minus X. So this is the formula. Is that okay? Now, the first part of the question, we are asked to find the probability that the player, is that okay, scored exactly two. That the player scored it. So this is the value of the discrete random variable. Here, x should be the variable representing that there is a score, that the player scored. Is that okay? Good. So it's going to be probability that the player scored exactly two. Mathematically, exactly means it's equal to two. Is that okay? So we know the value of x now, so we can fix that in into this formula. So uh, that will now be equal to n is 5. So it's going to be 5 combination 2 
then times probability of success is 0 0.4 raised to the power x and x is 2 times probability of failure which is 0 0.6 raised to the power what? n minus x n is 5, is that okay? n is 5, so if you put it minus x and x is 2 this is not really necessary to show up you could just have done it with your brain and said 5 minus 2 is 3 so it will be uh, 0 0.6 raised to the power 3 so probability that the player scored exactly 2 will not be equal to at this point, we can reach out for a calculator and operate 5 combination 2. Alright, 5 combination 2 is the same as 5 factorial all over 5 minus 2 factorial in bracket, which will give us 3 factorial. Then times 2 factorial, which is the x factorial, okay? We have the formula in our previous video, so we urge you to place check. So that's going to give us 5 factorial. Uh, this will give us 5 factorial. Let me write it out. All over 5 minus 2 then all factorial which will give us 3 factorial times x factorial which is 2 factorials and then uh, 0 0.4 raised to the power 2 times 0 0.6 raised to the power 3 so working this out the probability that the player scored exactly 2 will not be let's find out okay so it's going to be 5 factorial and then uh, is divided by uh, we have uh, 3 factorial and that 3 factorial is multiplied by 2 factorial okay so let's see what this can be that is 10 all right this is giving us 10 why not i work it straight so 10 times 0 0.4 raised to the power 2 10 times 0 0.4 raised to the power 2 all right and then we now have times 0 0.6 0 0.6 raised to the power 3 Good, so the probability is 0 0.3456. This is the result. You can put it in percentage. Multiply by 100, you have 34.56%. Is that okay? So either in this decimal or in a percentage. So this is the probability that the player is going to score exactly two penalties. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will now obtain the other probabilities. Already, you've been given the idea of what to do. Remember, when working with binomial probability, n will be constant. The outcomes, that is p and q, which is success and failure, will also be constant throughout the world experiment. Which means the only thing that will be changing our calculation here as to using this formula is the probability values which we are to obtain. You are working from the short break. Before the break, we already obtained the probability that the player scored exactly 2. Is that okay? We got the probability to be 0 0.3456, which we still decided to convert the percentage. By multiplying by 100, we got 34.56. Now, we want to determine the probability that the player scored exactly 3. Okay, you would recall that it was stated that throughout this experiment now, n will be constant, which is 5. The outcomes, p and q, will also be constant. So, what will be changing in value is the value of x. Is that okay? So let us look at the second part of the question. We are calculating the probability that the player scored exactly three penalty kicks. Now, of course, it's not going to be we substitute into this formula. Is that okay? N combination X. Our X is three, N is five. So it's going to be N combination three. Is that okay? Then our P is 0 0.4 raised to the power X. And X is three there. Then times Q, 0 0.6 raised to the power N minus X n is 5, x is 3. So 5 minus 3 will give us what? 2. Now let us evaluate this probability and see. You know that uh, in combination, if you have uh, n combination x, just like the formula was given to you in our previous videos, all right, n combination x is n factorial all over, open bracket, n minus x, close your bracket, factorial, then times x factorial. Is that okay? So here if I have 5 combination 3, it's going to be 5 factorial all over 5 minus 3 in bracket factorial, which will give us 2 factorial. Then we multiply the denominator by 3 factorial. So we're going to do that. Let's see what this is going to be. Is that okay? So 5 combination 3. Then uh, that is a 5 factorial from here. And then divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial, close your bracket. And then uh, open bracket 0 0.4 raised to the power 3. Right, close the bracket, then times 0 0.6 raised to the power 2. So equal to, it's giving me 0 
23.2304, which can be converted to percentage, we have a 23.04%. That is if it's necessary to convert to percentage. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're now determining the probability that the player scored at least three. At least three means he scored three or more. If I said I'm going to give you at least 100 Naira, I don't have money, right? Just uh, an example. It means I am going to give you 100 Naira exactly or more than 100 Naira. That's the meaning of that. And so we're going to use that idea to solve this probability in the third question, at least three. Of course, we're expecting that, okay, this probability now means he scored three penalty kicks or four penalty kicks or five penalty kicks. We'll be back from the short break. You are welcome from the short break. Now I want to obtain the probability that the player scored at least three. Before the break, I explained that the term at least three means he scored exactly three or more than three. I know that the highest number of times is to take the penalty is five, is that not so? So this simply means that the player scored exactly three or four or five. Does that make sense? So, this is how we represent that probability. So it's going to be probability that the discrete random variable x that the player scored is going to be greater than or equal to three. Is that okay? Equal to three or greater than three. That's how we represent that using this inequality sign. And so, the implication of this means probability that the player scored exactly three plus probability that the player scored um, exactly 4 you know this is actually probability that he scored 3 or probability that he scored 4 or probability that he scored all 5 and in probability the word or means plus if you hear or it means you're going to use what? plus so that's what I'm trying to do here so this probability that he scored all 5 alright so let us fix in the values and see what this is going to give to us Probability that he scored exactly 3 already, we obtained it in question 2 to be 0.2. So I'm going to fix it in, no need of substituting the formula here since I've already solved that. So 0.2304. Good. Now let us look at the probability that he scored exactly 4. We've not worked on that. So we're going to write the formula using the binomial uh, probability formula. So n combination x. Our x for 4 here is no. It's x for the 4 here. Is that okay? So that is going to be 5 combination 4 then times p, which is 0 0.4, raised to power what? Raised to power x. Our x here is what? 4. So I'm going to put it in, then times q. q raised to power n minus x. n is 5, x is 4. 5 minus 4 is going to give us 1. Did you take note of something that the power of this q and the power of this, the power of this p and the power of this q will always add up to give us n? Take note of that, okay? We encounter something like that under binomial expansion. Anyway, that's not what we are dealing with. So we move on. We are going to add plus the probability that is called exactly 5, which if you now write the formula here, x is 5, so it's going to be plus 5, combination 5. And then uh, p is 0 0.4 raised to the power x, and x is 5. Then it's meant to be times q, and q is 0 0.6 raised to the power 5 minus 5 which will give us 0, any series power 0 is going to be 1. Anyway, just for this question, let me show it, okay? It's not necessary to do that. So 5 minus 5 is going to give us 0. Any series power 0 is 1, okay? So this probability that the player scored at least 3 is not equal to, let's work out these terms and add them up, okay? I'm going to do it once, and uh, you have to work along to see. Um, if you do that, working out this probability, so let's see what it's going to give to us. 5 combination 4 will give us 5 already. So that will be 5 times, uh, we're going to open bracket 0 0.4 and raise it to power 4. Okay, and then uh, add up, is it add up, multiply, multiply 0 0.6. So 0 0.6. Good. This term is giving me 0 0.2304 already written here. Then this probability term here. Says so 0.0768. Okay, then plus let's work out this 5 combination 5 will give us 1. 0 0.6 raised to the power 0 is, is 1. Then it means that the only term that remains here is 0 0.4 raised to the power 5. 
So 0 0.4 raised to power 5. So it's giving me 0 0.01, 1024. Good. So add up these probabilities and see what this gives to us. So adding this term to this, that's plus 0 0.0768, then plus 0.2304 gauge. This is the probability that he scored at least 3. This can still be given as 31.74%. Is that okay? This is probability that he scored exactly 4. Probability that he scored exactly 5. Probability that he scored exactly 3. We obtained that already. Then the probability that he scored at least 3 now, win, which means 3, 4, or 5, is given by this. We are going to take a short break once again. When we come back, we'll look at the fourth part of the question. This time around, more than three, which means three is not inclusive in that probability. You're welcome from the break. Now, we are looking at the fourth part of the question, where we are to determine the probability that the player scored more than three. So it was specified, more than three. It means that 3 is not inclusive. Is that okay? So the player scored either 4 or 5 of the penalty kicks. So this is expressed as probability that the variable representing the score, is that okay? Is given to be greater than 3. This means 3 is not inclusive. So this probability includes P of 4, then plus P of what? 5. As I say, it's, it's possible that the more than three we are talking about is that he scored four. Or he scored even all fives. Instead of expressing the whole probability as in probability x equal to four here, yeah, probability x equal to five, we can just abbreviate like this. Is that okay? Now, how do we obtain these probabilities? Let's go and see. So, this is probability that he scored more than three is equal to x is four here. Now, is that also? So, using the binomial formula and combination of x is going to be five combination four. Then our success is 0 0.4, risk for our x, and x is 4. And then our failure, which is q, is 0 0.6, risk for our 1. We're going to add it to probability that is called all 5. That will give us 5 combination 5 now, because x is 5 here. And then uh, success is 0 0.4, risk to power x, and x is 5. Take note that the last one will be failure 0 0.6 raised to power 5 minus 5, which is 0. I won't show that this time around again, okay? I already showed such calculation in question 3. So let's uh, move up so that uh, we don't waste our time in calculating it. Take note once again, this is supposed to be 0 0.6 raised to power 0, which of course will give us 1. So let's forget about that. Now, if we work out these probabilities, mm, we already obtained the value, if you recall. From the previous question, number 3, we already obtained the value of these probabilities, p of 4 and then p that x is equal to 5. In fact, we got this probability to be 0 0.0768 from the calculator here and then this is 0 0.0124, there about If you add them up, it's going to give us 0 0.0892, alright, or converting to percentage, that's going to be 89.2%. So this is the probability that the players scored up more than 3, 4 or 5. Now we're going to look at next the probability that he scored at most 2. Another important concept to understand, just like we learned of that of at least. Is that okay? At most means that the highest the player scored was 2. At most means less than that value you specify or exactly that value. So we we'll take a short break and we'll come back this particular one. We're going to solve it using probability of 0, 1, and 2. Because we're thinking of at most. So it means the highest he scored is 2. He could have scored less than 2, which is 1, or maybe not even scoring anything at all.